welcome to our second uh, new member Zoom uh, this month of August, 2024. Um, and we're really glad you're here, whether uh, you're in the on the screen with us right now or watching on the YouTube replay. Um, these sessions have been going on for oh, about a year and a half now. Um, and um, I have with me three wonderful co-hosts, uh, Stephen Greenwood, over, over that guy, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and Mary Maloney, who's sitting in front of some beautiful artwork, and Hilary Gadsby, who's joining us from Wales in, in her garden. So um, we've been... Um, the four of us have been a team for quite some time. Um, each of them joined me very shortly after we started. And the purpose of these sessions is to just give help to anyone who's having a little trouble with the WikiTree learning curve. Um, and that that could mean that you're a very new member, or it could mean that you are not so new member and just maybe walked away, got frustrated, walked away and now want to come back. And um, I, I'd like to emphasize and I'll keep reminding everybody that no question is too basic. Um, so so please don't hold back um, thinking that, um, you know, oh, everybody knows that. Um, we're happy to um, really go back to, to steps one, two and three. Um, and we, you know, that said, we do sometimes get some more advanced um, questions, um, and we're happy to answer those as well. But we try and uh, concentrate on um, on getting started with WikiTree. That said, I have disabled my WikiTree browser extension, um, so so that my screen will look more like um, what a new member would see. And um, we can talk more about the WikiTree browser extension. It's just an add-on that it enhances your experience on the website. Uh, it's a wonderful thing, um, but it, there's a lot involved with it. And, and maybe maybe it might be a little overwhelming in, in your initial um, weeks as a WikiTreeer. Um, and, but Murray and Hillary and um, Stephen, they'll probably still have their their WikiTree browser extensions on. So if they screen share, you'll see you'll see some of the power behind the browser extension. <laughs> um, just to give a quick introduction, I've been on uh, WikiTree for five years now, uh, and I, I stumbled upon the website as in the process of a, a Google search, found one of my ancestors, uh, and went to their WikiTree profile and was impressed. And I I vividly remember. Um, my early days when I felt I felt like I had walked into a massive castle where I was afraid to leave the entryway because I thought I will get lost and never find my way back. But uh, you just need to know if you have the same experience that there are so many people who are willing and ready to help. Um, and there are multiple ways to access uh, the wisdom of other wiki trees. The community is fantastic. Um, so um, besides these sessions, there's also uh, the G2G forum. And if you join a project, which we highly recommend, um, that that helps you get to know um, a group of people with similar research interests. So speaking of projects, uh, I'm a member of the England, Wales, Scotland, and Canada projects. I also coordinate the, the uh, Taiwan project, which is housed under the global project. And um, so I will uh, turn it over to Steve, because you're just to my side over here. Okay. <laughs> and you're to my right. So um, I actually am in a castle. I'm coming to you live from Chicago, where Betsy's usually based, but I'm down here uh, visiting my friends. And this place is just so epic. I mean, they have a kind of fresca on the wall. Um, they're all, we're also big nerds, so this is Vigo, a giant portrait of him up in the, the center of the background here. He's not a historical figure, but he's a very famous non-historical figure. <laughs> so, uh, and I come from a Wiki background as Wiki founder. Uh, again, found WikiTree around 2020, uh, contributed, you know, so the last four years. Uh, uh, got into various projects, mostly Germany project. Uh, I'm also part of the events committee with uh, Betsy as well. 
So, you know, we do communicate. Uh, I know Wiki Games is going on right now, which I haven't been able to really help out with that, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully you guys are doing a good job over there. And, you know, willing to answer any kind of questions. There are no dumb questions. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stephen. Mm -hmm. um, Murray? Hi, my name is Murray Maloney. Um, you may notice in your chat uh, that I've added a couple of links, one to the Wikitree browser extension and one to Wikitree Sourcer. These are two um, pieces of software that you can add to your browser and that will help you while you're working in Wikitree. Um, and uh, some people like to wait a little while before they get started using these tools and just get used to working on Wikitree and then start um, using the more advanced tools. Uh, but um, just thought you should know about them and you could read up about them at those links. That those are the um, uh, those are the uh, user okay. manuals for yeah. yeah help pages. Yeah, uh, so I'm I'm a former technical writer, um, and so I I. Um, I helped with the Wikitree browser extension documentation and with a couple of Greg Clark's applications as well for Fantree, uh, Fanchard and, and his big tree. And uh, I've been on Wikitree since 2019. And uh, I'm glad to be here to help you. And I remember when I started on Wikitree and how hard it was. Um, and so uh, we're here to help you get used to um, working here. Hillary? Great. Hillary. Hillary, over to you. There we go. Right. Shall I introduce myself? I'm yeah. Hillary. I am one of the Wikitree greeters. So if you're fairly new, I may, may or may not have been somebody that greeted you. I am also a project coordinator for both the England and the Wales um, projects. Um, I am... Uh, one of the project coordinators for the Orphan Trail on the England project. So um, you may come across me if you've got English ancestry and you decide to join the project. Um, I've been on Wikitree since 2011. So I've been on here the longest. <laughs> when I when I joined Wikitree, you could actually upload a um, GEDCOM to Wikitree, a big GEDCOM, and, which is what I did. So I am actually still gradually working through a lot of my profiles to make sure that they are updated. I think I'm down to a lot of the ones that are probably closer, more likely to be living people rather than um, the um, people that are, are open and shared. So, um, but um, I certainly know the, what, what issues you can get with a GEDCOM. So if anybody has issues with a GEDCOM, I may be able to help. Yes, <laughs> you're you're the first person I come to when I have a GEDCOM question. <laughs> so, all right. Well, who has a question for us? We, I mean, we do have, you know, a backup plan of things we can talk about, but we'd most like to to address your specific problems and questions. Yes, Christine. You, you need to unmute, Christine. No. Okay. Um, I'm the person that mentioned to you that I'm I am currently working on cleaning up my ancestry uh, family tree so yes. I can then export it as a GEDCOM and load it into WikiTree. And um, I've I've read very I read something that suggested to me that that you couldn't actually load it into the project and but then Hillary said she did load hers so um, just if you can talk about the process that would be involved. Absolutely. Christine, before we start, take before that? we start, oh um, yeah, before we start, I I just want to ask you how how large is your tree? Um, it's a direct ancestor tree, and I think it's something okay. like 125 people. Okay. And one That's other. That's a lot. That. Yeah. yeah oh, sure. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, do you have a lot of media attached to your no. tree? No. Okay, well, that's good because I uh, 
that was my problem. I did not have a huge tree, but when I initially thought I would try and import it as a GEDCOM, I had trouble. And that's what somebody said. I, you know, I had a lot of photos and documents and, and so that's good for you. Mm -hmm. So does it, only, uh, does it go back like four or five generations then to account for the 120 people or so then? Um, no, actually, well, may, maybe it's more than 125 people because it goes back, uh, 10 or 15 generations. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's a line that probably pushed... line. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you, and... Can't, you can't um, import JetCom anymore. You could at one time when oh, I joined, okay. but I was early yeah. on. But you now, you do upload a JetCom to what they call Jed Compare. So it will compare your JetCom to the profiles that are already in Wikitree, just so you don't create a duplicate. So, um, and then if you you find that you have that something isn't in WikiTree, when you get to the end of looking through everything, um, it will let you import the information from those people that are not already in WikiTree. But you might find if there's not a lot, or you might find it you get to use you get to understand WikiTree better if you. Um, uplo upload things individually. You can use things like the WikiTree Sourcer if you if you get a chance to have a read of it to help in import individual people, which is um, from both Ancestry and the Family Search Tree. If your family are on Family Search Tree, you can you can get it from there as well. So, I personally I would say it's probably better to do it. It's probably better to use that method of bringing people in because you can get each person in individual correct just as you do them and you don't feel overwhelmed with what you might have to do if you're using Jed Compare because if you've got a lot, quite a lot of people I think you can import up to 5,000 if you've got a lot of people it feels like forever when you're trying to go through and seeing if if they're actually if that person may already actually be in the uh, in WikiTree you know it, it's the sort of thing where you want to probably if you are going to upload a JUDCOM, upload just a very small amount. So, yeah, you could consider splitting your overall tree into different branches, maybe uh, each of your four grandparents or each of your eight great grandparents. Um, so, that um, I put up, I'm screen sharing now, and I've also shared this link in the chat. Um, this will give you more information on JED Compare. Uh, in term, if you decide to go that route, but that's a marvelous suggestion that Hillary made um, about um, importing over from uh, one at a time. That's what I ended up doing, and uh, I, yeah. I guess for me, I, I was early enough on in my genealogy adventure that I really welcomed the opportunity to review what I had done, say like five years ago and uh, add on to it. So maybe we could walk through an example if um, if we could find somebody to add via Ancestry. Does, um, do any of the four of us have someone that we, and we can show um, with Sourcer how to build all citations and add someone over? You know, I can, uh, uh, is that Anne? No, that's Marie. Oh, um, Marie. Yeah, I was just going to say, I joined uh, Wikitree a couple of years ago from a video um, on YouTube when someone was presenting it, and it seemed pretty interesting. But I'm already involved in all the other websites, so I kind of dabbled a little bit, uh -huh. and I did do the I did the JEDCOM thing, and to be honest... You know, I'd be very cautious. First mm -hmm. of all, you almost have to scrub. If you've been doing genealogy for a long, long time, whatever file GEDCOM you have really should be scrubbed, taken out duplicates and stuff that, you know, doesn't really, doesn't really contribute, if you will, anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, so I found that once I sort of got started, I think the first time you make connection to the real tree is the aha moment. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, a lot of things. So the thing about putting a big JEDCOM in, you're probably going to get a lot of duplicates, you know, it's if it's too large, because obviously everybody's trees are starting to get connected mm -hmm. and you don't really want to do all that extra work. But it is also I would I would also add a really great opportunity to 
review what you've done and see what's still missing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I've been sort of more adding my family sort of one little branch at a time um, and going through the, the wiki sorcerer, the sorcerer and going mm -hmm. on to ancestry, which is my main tree. And I have all my records and finding a record. And I guess one thing, I don't know what everybody else's experience with this is, but as you're trying to build your tree a little bit, you may want to dig in with more records later, but sometimes you want to at least add a good source. So what I try to do is find something that supports the birth, death, or marriage and the relationship. Yeah. And it's and that's hard because some records that you know you get the they 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 circle around it, but they don't really get it right in the right where it should be. So I, I just think I've been very excited about WikiTree in the last couple of months because I went to a conference in Pennsylvania and learned more about records. And all of a sudden I found, I actually met two six cousins. And then I found out that they're all actually on WikiTree too. So their profile. So it really helped my tree. Uh-huh. So it was great. So I just have to say, um, WikiTree is sort of like the on my list. It's one more place I check on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And I try to, you know, because I mean, you're I'm already syncing. I don't really you know, try to sync family search too much because it's it's a whole job to do that. What I try to do is work on my ancestry and I use family search and I use wiki, you know, to for referencing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, again, it's been a wonderful journey, but I would definitely caution anybody if they're thinking the fast way is to add a GEDCOM. Um, it is, you do wanna, you wanna get some profiles in there so you get some connections. But cleaning them up, I'm having some difficulty trying to figure out how to clean up some of my, you know, tags and different things that they're trying to tell me how to do. So, uh, if I may interject, are you familiar with the automatic JEDCOM cleanup tool, the AGC button? It yeah. may not appear for you, uh, but it is an option, I believe, for anyone who has uh, the browser extension. Correct me if I'm wrong. I have the browser extension and okay. I, I pretty much added everything, but I didn't know how to use everything. So it's possible I have something I don't know how to use because okay. that's the thing about WikiTree. You learn something new every day. Right, right. We're all learning. I learn every day too. So uh, at least when I look at it, uh, when I get to a JetCom, I do have a button called AGC that pops up on my browser and uh, I can click it and it will take all of that junk and it'll try its best to assign these things to sources or whatever direction they're heading. A lot of times it's going to ancestry sharing links. And a lot of times those are really not accessible for people who are outside of ancestry. So I don't have an account, for example, so I can't see it. Um, but it's a good starting point because it creates like a research notes section, I believe, or creates a notes section to kind of uh, break down all of the discrepancies within that profile and say, hey, this thing is missing. This thing doesn't look right. Uh, and then I think it gives you a good starting point for cleanup. Because it can't be overwhelming if you look at the JetCom junk, you know, and, and there's no way to really assemble it. Does that make any sense at all? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. If you, if you do find that tool, I would recommend using that on any uh, JetComs that do look like that. Or so any it's, profiles. It's a, separate, it's a separate extension or it's under the Wiki extension, WikiTree extension? Uh, please back me up on this, our tech people. <laughs> Murray? Um. Marie, sure. would you would you happen to know offhand any of your profiles where you need to do a, a little cleanup? I'm afraid Maybe I don't at them. the moment. Are you? I'm sorry. Are you talking to Murray? Or are you talking to Mar Marie? Yeah, I'm talking to Marie. Sorry, Marie, Marie. not Murray. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, Marie, do you know any of your profiles offhand that need uh, a little tidying up? Yes, I was working yeah. on it this morning. So, Great. all right, this give it, give us a profile ID. Um, okay. And since I have my browser extension disabled, would would one of the other co-hosts like to? Uh, ask I I could do this. Yeah, let's let's do okay. it. So go, go ahead, Steve. Okay. Provide me an ID, and I'll type it in right now. Uh, well, mine I, is. Yeah, if you go into mine, there's a couple of my ancestors, really close ancestors, that have problems. Um, it's Christy 1712. How is Christy spelled? C-H-R-I-S-T-Y. Why? You said 712? 
1712. Oh, 1712, sorry. Uh, I apologize for background noise. It was a very loud beagle. Um, and, and yes, the ATC. Oh, is this is your profile. Browser extension. Okay, yes. so we're looking at you. Now I just need to click on your ancestors from here. Yeah, actually do um, John Tomer Christie, my grandfather. I see it. Okay. Is it okay if I screen share then? Yes. I'm on his profile now. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and take over a screen share now. And let's go to Christy. So a whole bunch of them show up on um, okay. my suggestions because can you see this yeah, now? I can see this. So when All you, right. yeah. So I took out some of the duplications on that or the biography. They had a duplicated Ooh. a couple times. Yeah, look at all. This one. Okay, that's yeah, that's where it gets fun. Um, because they don't yeah, these themselves are not valid sources. They don't go anywhere. It's just source S1, source S3 file, which is tying to the ancestry GEDCOM, I'm assuming. But these are valid sources. These are great. Go ahead. Yeah, so I have some of these tags and they, and I forget what the, um, it's a 931 or whatever. It's one that says it's easy to fix, but I don't know how to fix that. Oh, easy okay. Yeah. The data doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The data doctor, because I, I did try to clean some of them up and, you know, it, again, from anybody who's, who's new, it's like, this is all Greek and then you have to start using it. And then it just starts making sense. So, yes. Okay. So first thing is I opened this up into edit mode. Do you see this button at all? Yes. You do have that button. Okay. Well, I, have, so, well, I see it on your screen. I, have, I don't have to look at my other computer for that. Oh, okay, right. I was gonna ask if you had it's it on your here. end. Uh, but if you don't, it might be because the browser extension allows for this to appear. I can see there's some additional things that the browser extension does that doesn't show up on the base version. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna look at the, the text here before I do any edits to it. and. Eventually, one of these days, I would love for the sidebar to go away, and maybe the new to redesign is dealing with that. Um, but yeah, so we, we could see that some of these things are cited, you know, with legitimate, well, you know, find a grave is kind of one of those quasi legitimate uh, sources, unless you're just using it for the grave itself. But I have um, the death certificate, so I'm good on that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we cite the death certificate for death. Um, I will only, like I said in the last, um, you know, cast that I only use find a grave for the grave location, and that's really what should only be used for. Um, but, uh, you know, marriage is like, okay, you know, what, what's happening here with all the children and the wife and the husband, like that, yeah, those little codes are not really going anywhere. Uh, these sources here, the latitude and longitude of the marriage aren't really going anywhere. Okay, so we can see that they, they exist in the references section but it's not tying it to the actual data points that we need, right? That's right. what we're so doing, you know. I guess, I don't know if there's like a, like an inter, not quite a new class, but it's like the next class up, which is when you start to do some of this, somebody to walk you through, like, is it the refs, yeah. you know, those little references, sources, um, I think I understand that like um, when it just talks about a source and doesn't show one, that's probably not as valuable, right? Yeah. Well, I, I, I see what they're doing now. So they're assigning a number to a source. So you have to, you have to look at the number and then you got to go find it in the list, but that's not super efficient because then you're not tying that actual source name to the data that's being cited. So this might be able to tie those together. I'm going to click on that AGC button and see what happens. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the top. Sorry, I'm not trying to make anybody vomit here. Just uh, And it runs a little bit slower when I'm running Zoom at the same time. I should clarify that. Okay, so let's do it. And there, one button click. It is now trying its best to assign certain things to certain sections. And I think it's done that. Let's see, 1897 court in the city directory. And then it cites uh, inline citation ref city directory, U.S. city directories and then links back to Ancestry.com. Okay, so it's it's doing that. Let's go ahead and hit preview. And this is what it's going to look like now. Uh, this is looking a little bit better where we got inline citations for every data point. Okay. Oh, almost every data point. Yeah, the city directory is a big one here. Um, now it creates a research notes section. And in this case, it has a couple that says facts with no date. So that's... Okay, so it identifies the uh, census 1920, uh, the county marriages, 
uh, the family search family tree itself, which I mean, I don't know no. we should be studying that. And then the census 1920 came up again. Um, notes from external profile, I'm not really sure what that is. Issues to be checked. So then, then it talks about what these things are and it says what it did uh, and then it combined some facts. So then it can, you know, it told you what it did. We want to keep all that in place because that's what we did to clean up this profile. Um, the sources seem like they're citing nicely now because the inline citations are going to these bolded, you know, city directory, 1900 census, et cetera. Um, this could probably use some consolidation. You know, again, if it's a lot of the same data, we would use uh, a ref name tag. So we can just assign that one reference to one source and then use it across all of those that cite the same thing. So you're not getting all these duplicates of city directory. You know, it, it would just be oh, in other words, it would be one source and it would just have a ref flag and then it would show a number in the bar. Yeah, the yeah. So like if I type up an example, I'm just going to go back to uh, edit mode here or into the edit window. Um, so, so normally you see it creates a ref, right? So mm -hmm. REF and then close, uh, you know, with the greater than symbol. But if you want to create a ref name, uh, this is what you'd put in and then you create the equal sign. Now, some people don't use quotation marks, but I just use quotation marks to establish the name of the thing. And I would just say, you know, directory. And then I would close it and then I would actually have, you know, the name of the source would be here. And then I would close it with another uh, ref tag. And anytime you use this segment, and it shows up somewhere else. So then if you go farther on down, you cite it again, what you would want to do in this case then is make sure that there's a forward slash directly behind the name of your reference. And that would allow this to repeat multiple times. So you could have one source with a bunch of different numbers and all of those different numbers would go to the different parts of the article that you're trying to you know, reference that information. Does that make sense? Um, you're a little over my head on some of that. This okay. HTML. <laughs> so I guess my, yeah, I know. But I guess one question is when we get to the point where maybe we need a little bit of stepping us through that stuff, that, like maybe mm -hmm. we want to do that. Is there a, a course that's already videoed or something that we could do? Or because a lot of your stuff is your, you know, your athons and your other things are live. Right. But you have the newbies, but you don't have after that too much, you know, like how to do stuff. Well, there's a page that Betsy can point you to for okay. a so it's wiki like, markup okay. for HTML, right? Oh, Again, yes. yeah, well, the help is big, but yes, you're right. Maybe it's in there somewhere. <laughs> right, right. Um, so what Steve is talking about, um, Steve, can I take over for a um, Yeah, yeah. And I'll just uh, erase this since okay. I, that was it for example only. But I'll go ahead and save the profile. Um, really quick here, just so you can see what it looks like finalized. Thank you. Um, and then in, in the bottom, it automatically adds this change explanation reformatted by the extension AGC. Oh, okay. So, so that, that'll be attached to the history now of this profile. And hopefully it's a little bit easier to manage uh, John Christie here now. And you'll see there's also a table of contents that kind of breaks down all the different research notes. So cool. And then- was that Murray? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Steve. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, oh, okay. You wanted to talk about something? I'll, I'll go ahead and stop sharing. I, I just wanted to ask Marie, have you discovered no. the Wikitree channel on YouTube? Yes. Um, okay. And a so lot of them are older. Yeah, I've gone through them. At, sometimes I don't go through them in order, but I just sort of hit them as I need to. Plus I do, I do sure. subscribe, so I try to get anything new coming up. Um, Right. And, and my learning curve is like, you know, straight up at this point, because it, it is the yeah. HTML that I really don't understand that coding. Um, yeah. So, you know, you understand genealogy, but it's the other part you don't get. So you have to figure it out. Yeah. Right. Sorry about that. Exactly. That's okay. So what I'm showing right now is um, I put this link already in the chat. Um, this is a free space page specifically for this series of um, new member Q and A's. Um, and so I always keep the, the schedule up to date um, in case you're looking for the Zoom link. But in addition to that, let me get down. You can see how long we've been mm, at it. Okay. Should we put this at the top? Probably. Um, mm -hmm. later, <laughs> other helpful resources. So we have a cheat sheet here, um, mm -hmm. which is, it's just 
what I found helpful. Um, so you can get to it there. I will also, um, I'll give you that link directly. Let's see, how could I, how could I get to the Is chat? There? Uh, no, I'm trying to get back to the, back to the chat. There we go. Okay. Um, it's funny because we can't see the chat on your screen. <laughs> it floats. Yep. Okay. I wanted to go to everybody. There's the link for that screen. Um, and it, uh, it, uh, I did, I did, I mean, at first it was just sort of a stream of consciousness, you know, series of notes, and I did, um, organize it for sharing purposes, but it's just, a lot of it has to do with these little quirky things that you just have to learn through experience. So the, um, what Steve was, Stephen was talking about with repeated sources, yeah. um, so here's an example of a source that's cited one time, and I talk about the ref tags. But then here, when you are citing this, uh, okay, uh, this section in blue, when you're citing the same source repeatedly, you'll want to come up with a nickname for it. In Stephen's example, it was just directory. Really, it's whatever you know, you can easily recall. And then, uh, so in my example, I, my nickname is 1901 census. So then it gives you, it shows you what you would do the first time. And then subsequent times you would only have to enter ref name equals. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you for this reference. I'll, I'll spend some time on this page and that'll probably help me a lot. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, there's market. Also, yeah. Yeah, there's also, you were asking for other um, sort of intermediate learning opportunities. Um, there is uh, the Wikitree Academy. Let me see if I can hmm. get to that. And the trick is getting to it. Search. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to mute. So my under my uh, experience is that this is um, you do have to have a separate even though it's part of WikiTree you have to have a separate login for this. Uh, this is actually not what I wanted. Uh, oh wait, is that what I wanted? The actual there we go. Power up your WikiTree experience. Oh. So let me give the link to that. And then put that, there you go. So um, there are sort of modules of, um, of in, uh, organized instruction there. Thank you. Sure, of course. I'll um, keep you busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's never ending, the learning curve, which is fun. Yeah. Can I, can I go back to um, you were talking about when you're putting in a reference and you make a nickname for it so that you yeah. can use. Yeah. Um, can I assume that that would only work within one profile? And if you go to some another profile, you would have to do that again. Yes, that yes. is that is correct. OK, uh, OK. I've lost. Oh, I, I, I see. I went from here. That's a That's an excellent question, Christine. Um, so now um, Hillary said that she had a profile where she could demonstrate a quick way to move an ancestry profile over from ancestry to WikiTree. Oh, good. So, okay, I am going to stop sharing. Um, right. Or you can just take over. Yeah. I, I feel like they've switched some some things up on um, on Zoom. Well, some okay. things are different. I, I, every time I go to share, this, they change something. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is my profile for somebody called Henry William Collins. And as you can see, he's got no father or mother at the moment. But I have him 
in my ancestry tree um, and this is the same person in my ancestry tree and he has got um, a mother and a father in my ancestry here. I also have him on um, the family search family tree as well. This is the same, this is the same parents, Joseph and Matilda, and here he is again. So basically I have got Saucer on my um, browser here. This is the WikiTree Saucer. And this is very helpful in um, just allowing you to import a single person from either um, family, family Search or from Ancestry. Now, I usually un, um, import from an, uh, Family Search, and I've actually got 13 sources there. What I usually try and do is just check to see what there is. And there are settings in Sorcerer which you can um, adjust so that you get it to import how you want it. Because a lot of the family search um, uh, sources may refer to, say, a baptism of a child or something, which you may have on the child's um, profile already, and you don't necessarily want it on the parent's profile as well. You might just want things that refer to that particular person. So um, it's always worth going through that first, as with anything, go through and just see what there is there. I've actually got it set up so it will only import things that are relevant for that particular person. So um, if it's if it's got baptisms and things, it shouldn't it shouldn't import it from Family Search. Um, I haven't ever imported anything from Ancestry, so this will be my first time importing from Ancestry. But um, it sh hopefully it should work. If not, I'll import it from um, the Family Search one. So what you need to do click the button right and if you see here it says save person data so if you click on that it, you can see it's gradually picking up the various bits and pieces it needs from the uh, this the what I've got on ancestry um, sometimes it takes a little while to find all the information it needs to so um, but it is automatically doing things Looks like there's some errors in there. So, wow, this is going to save a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're not you're not have to actually do anything. You're just waiting for it to do it for you. If it no, it's work great. Properly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it says some of the records couldn't be retrieved. So we can have, I can have a look and see what there is on there. Um, so or or whatever. There's a, there seems to be some problems. So, but we'll continue anyway, and we'll see. Uh, right. So hopefully it's got the person data. So now I go back to the WikiTree profile and I want to add the father because that's two words on. So add the father. So I'm creating a new profile for his father. Continue. So, and then I just go back to this button again. And it says set fields from the person data for Joseph Collins saved just now. Oh. So it should have filled in all the various bits. Yeah, Joseph Collins, 1833, Minstead, Hampshire. Right. And it's uh, put in mm -hmm. the biography for me. So it's put in what I needed in there. Um, and it's put in my census information that it picked up had on its profile and you should be an advanced option to be able to do that because if you go to basic sourcing it's going to force things differently yeah right so oh, so to be able oh, to create yeah a, a it, it says file default file. to yeah it says on there it, i've ticked the default to the advanced option which yeah. is what i use now because yeah. i just want to type in my sources and i have to yeah. wait for it to verify it yeah so, um, so that should have everything and it also puts at the bottom, it's put where it's got the information from. So it's put that it's got it from an ancestry tree and, and the link to that ancestry tree. And if you did from family search, it would do the same from family search tree, do the same thing for the family search tree, put in the link to the person in the family search tree. So I go continue. Now it will be looking for this person. Um, but because I've got, um, probably because I've either got the browser extension or on, most likely, it actually gives me a way of filtering down 
the location. So I actually, it filters out a lot of them that are in the wrong country. So if I press location, I'll just get the ones in, in the UK. So, well, he's not Cornwall or Gloucestershire, wasn't Essex and he's not born in Bath. So he's obviously not on here. So I can actually go and create his profile now. Can I ask you a question? Is it important to set if they if you know they're not the right person to set them as a reject? It depends whether it's something that's quite close, because um, I've often find that it, 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 there's an if you've got more, if you're in, importing a lot of information, then there shouldn't be they shouldn't get confused. Like if it's in a completely different county or country, it shouldn't get confused. It depends. <laughs> yes, I made that mistake once where. I saw everybody that tried to match and I set them all as rejected matches. And then all of those rejected matches showed up at the bottom of the profile. And I obviously didn't want them there. So I had to go through and click, no, I don't care about this being a rejected match. I had to do it for every person. So now the only time I ever will reject matches if a person is so close in age or birth where the location is, you know, easy to be confused. That's the only time you really should use rejected match. The rest of them will just go away. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So there we are. We have Joseph on there. And if I want to add, I had more I had more things in um, family search um tree. If I've if there's anything that's got missed or I can get it from somewhere else, I'll use my saucer extension to import the anything else that I need to import. But I've now actually got this person in the tree and um all set up for me to do any editing I want to do. That's great. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It shows you how powerful it is. That it wasn't <laughs> doing it. You couldn't do that initially with Saucer, but he's he's developed the developer has, uh, has added it, and it's really useful. Well, I've been going through that same going through Saucer, doing search ancestry, finding my record, looking for like the one that really kind of supports the birth, marriage, or death, if I could. And then go into that record, doing a source citation, copying, pasting. So this would be a lot easier. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I, think I was doing it the long question. way. Okay. <laughs> I I really appreciate uh, that demo, Hillary, because I've only used the build all citations feature mm -hmm. uh, from from uh, Family Search, and I, I I had assumed that you could do it easily from. Um, ancestry as well but i had not played with the the person data field yeah. so i've actually created people from just from the birth registration in um, england before now and then added in lots of things um from the build full build citations afterwards so that i've actually got the birth registration there which i can't add in family search anyway um not from the one that gives you the mother's maiden name so um you can do things you can use different things you can just use from one source or you can use it from a lot uh, a person in a tree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's great thank you that's another interesting point is that use all sources available you know in terms of like where you're getting your data so like she said family search doesn't have certain things ancestry does and vice versa so when we bring them all together on wiki tree we create a much more complete profile you get to understand you know that this was a human and not just a bunch of data points um so so yeah definitely try to reach out you know to as many sources as you can yeah, yeah. pennsylvania death records are not available on family search but they are on ancestry so even some of the um the contests if there's anybody in pennsylvania that is in that time frame that i can look up from my ancestry, their birth certificate, death certificate, I try to source it and bring it over. Mm. There's lots of things that we use in for the a lot of the England and Wales ones that I deal with mostly that are not in ancestry, not may not be in um, family search, but might be on a, another free to access website. So um, I certainly use them and and I mean, if you're in, uh, if you're researching people in New Zealand and Australia where you haven't got some of the censuses and things like that, it you they they saucer even works with the newspapers, which can be very useful. Oh, 
I guess that's another advanced topic we'll have to learn. Because well, that... Depends where your research is, really. But, you know, he, he, the person that's developing it is is moving it on all the time. So if you've got, if there's enough people that are interested in a particular data set and he can do it, he, you know, you just have to ask. It, it, it may not be high priority. It depends what it is. So. Yeah, it's Rob, Rob Pavey, right, with Sorcerer? Yes, yeah. it's Rob, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Marie. If you're if you want to dive a little deeper, um, there are Rob has done videos himself, all on the sorcerer. Extent. Oh, good. I'll look that up. Yeah, yeah. Well, because newspapers. When I was in one of the um, connectathons or whatever, unsourced, I was looking for sorcerer stuff. Mm -hmm. I found an obituary in a very obscure paper on ancestry it wasn't even newspapers but it wouldn't let me I, I got to the point where i was trying to figure out how to download it and upload it because it was just a jpeg file and it but it was it was it was gonna fill a fill the response fill the what's the death date at least uh, for somebody that was way yeah. off yeah yeah hmm. okay that's good thank you oh. wow Learn uh, all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to share um, an upcoming learning opportunity that we will have uh, in early October, which given the rate at which time flies, it's going to be here really soon. Um, so October 4 through 7. <laughs> That's smiley face. <laughs> Is our, well, that was I. I'm going on vacation, smiley face. <laughs> but um, October 4 through 7 is our next big thon, community thon. Uh, and the one in the fall is always a sourcing thon. So if you uh, if you've never done a thon before, if you feel like you want a little extra help um, in in um a small supportive group that is not concentrating on points, 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 uh, then this is the team for you. Um, you'll see the, the uh, registration will, will go up uh, about a month prior to the event. And it, it will go, if you follow events in your tag, you'll, you'll see the G2G notice. And, uh, but you can learn more about the new team, uh, which is just focusing on learning and camaraderie not the scores. And as far as I'm concerned, um, if you get one point and you learn something, it's a win. Yeah. So, yeah. Just yeah, I was doing some of that, you know, just kind of intermittently. It wasn't about being in the contest. It was about learning yeah. how to do it. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, and those of you who don't uh, are wondering why the peculiar name, <laughs> um, NEWT is an acronym to new to Wikitree. So, and um, like like these sessions, where we're not too stringent about um, you know being strictly new. So, just if you feel like you you want a learning uh, environment, this is for you. How does how does something like a sourceathon work? Yeah. Oh, good question. Um, so the thons are all 72 hours in length and it just, it goes around the clock. You, you, you all have to take care of yourself, pace yourselves. Um, and stay hydrated. Yeah. Stay hydrated. You're on a team. And then um, with the source of thons, you would get a point for every profile that's unsourced where you add a source. So you do have to, um, do a little digging. Um, unlike a connectathon, where the goal is to build out from an existing profile, um, in connectathons, I find it a lot easier to work on my own personal tree. I'll just pick a branch where I haven't really built out, say, siblings and, and cousins and, and add on. In a sourceathon, um, if you've been good, with your profile creation, hopefully everything in your own tree has a source already. So you have to go looking. Um, and let me show you. Um, and there's about one point, what, three million unsourced profiles that we've been keeping track of? Yeah. Something um, to that number? 
Uh, the other thing about Sourceathon is that you do have to tally when you make that change. So in Connectathon, it does it automatically to, to record your uh, you know, submission of the, the connection. So you get the point automatically. In Sourceathon, you do have to go to the tracker and you have to say, I added the source of this person and then you know hit select and it'll give you the point. So and it's a little bit different in submission. Yeah, yeah, you'll see the tracker every time you make a change on a profile. Um, you may have noticed that there's a colored box right up at the top and uh, that says, oh, did you, is this, was this a change part of the challenge? And if so, you can, you can click yes and, and then you get your point. Um, if you're just doing it for your own work, then, then you just leave it alone. Right. But, so there should be a checkbox for sources right. on right there. But um, for for training for the the athons, yeah. you might want you could go to that pull down that says unsourced profiles, right? Yeah. Right. I've done those, and I try to find ones like even in Pennsylvania where I know the records pretty well. So I try right. to do a couple just right. to keep me busy. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah. yeah. So I've just gone. I've gone under find to categories. Now these are the broadest possible categories. Uh, on Wikitree. And now if you go to maintenance categories, and then you will see um, unsourced. Oh, oh there it is. 1.199 1. million. <laughs> I take a moment to okay. I'm well, working on them. I'm working on them. <laughs> nobody panic. That's why we have source thons <laughs> I don't panic. think we have enough of them, honestly. <laughs> And let's go. I think everyone on the call is North American. And then you could either go to the United oh. States or Canada. Uh, and then within the United world. States, then there's a breakdown by oh. state. You just go go where you're comfortable. As, as we said, oh, if you know one state's records particularly well, that's a good place to go. So, um, and then, all right, let me... Well, I'm going to go to Vermont because I was just thinking yesterday when we were in the middle of the sourcing slalom for the wiki games, Vermont Jeez, Virginia. really yeah. does have good records, good civil records. And then you get a list and you can see, um, you just pick one and. Try not to find a Smith. <laughs> or <Jones. laughs> okay well at least that's a start we know there's something on family search right 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 let's okay. do it let's do it right now <laughs> oh, Go for it. what is your question oh no the qu that question is that we just finished the unsourced thought and we did over five thousand profiles that are no longer unsourced Yay. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, you know, the thons are, are so much fun and, and there's a lot of, um, you know, communication amongst the teams, either on Discord or G2G. Um, and I will say with the, with the Newt team, because it's a, a learning team, um, we have a couple of Zoom meetings leading up to the event to just help people, um, you know, sort of get ready um, so that you don't feel like you're being tossed in at the deep end of the pool. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's great fun. It's a good way to get to know other members of the community and it's for the good of the tree. So like, like Ann said, 5,000 profiles are now sourced that were not sourced before. So that's our goal. They're called new connections to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> True. Right. True. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, we're, you got me work on this one. <laughs> we're coming up to the hour, not not there yet, but um, are there questions? Yes, Christine. Um, if I'm doing a profile of somebody, can I list all their children without creating a profile for each of those children? Yes. 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 Um, it it depends. Uh, what what is the date? What is the date of the uh... living or non living? <laughs> uh, and any time from today back to uh, fourteen hundred. Right, right. You, we want to be very careful with privacy for living people. 
Oh, no, we don't do living okay. people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I would just say um, with pro when, when you're before 1700 and you're creating a list like that in the profile, um, in the biography, you would want to add a source. Okay. You know, for, yeah. you know. 1650. Well, how do we know that there was a son, William, you know, anything pre 1700 also has to be, I mean, there's, there's a process for people to work on profiles that old as well. Are, are you already uh, certified for pre 1700? No, because I think you have to have added 50 profiles to. Okay. So you haven't met the threshold yet. No. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, that's, that's one of the reasons why I am, um, trying to get my my people ready to, to load yeah. uh, or, or not necessarily load, but to do the GEDCOM so I can compare it um, is because, you know, I find I find mistakes for some of my people back in 1650 and uh, that I want to fix and yeah. it won't let me, you yeah. know. But if you're still branching out from yourself, I would say, you know, just go ahead and put some profiles in manually and get that number up. So at least then you have more options once you hit your 50 without having to wait for the JetCon to do all the work for you and everything. Uh, yeah. And you'll, you'll ensure that you're, you're gonna have much more cited and, and accurate stuff. You're not gonna spend as much time trying to clean up. That's just my recommendation. And as older as older profiles, you're probably gonna find matches maybe already too. Yeah, they may already be in right, the system. Yeah, yeah I, I have found matches for some of my people already, but right, right. not all of them. And so the idea is that, Oh. Matches where they list three children, but not my ancestor and the other seven children and stuff like that. Something that a lot of people fail to understand is that, you know, when we talk about the word family tree, they think, you know, my localized family tree, this is my family tree, mm -hmm. that it won't potentially ever intersect with anybody else's. But we're all putting in our branches. I think on the Facebook group, they were talking about our twigs. We are the little twigs that start <laughs> that connect into the branches that eventually connect to the world tree. So yeah. I also wanted to establish, like, you know, we, we changed the... Um, the dialogue as to how we describe everything, you know, that helps people understand where they're coming from and, and how they're attaching into the project. Oh, I realized that. Yeah. 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 Not, not saying that you weren't, but you know, I wanted to kind of bring that up as a reminder to everybody. Like my family tree on ancestry, I have my direct ancestors and I don't bother with all the other people or I'd never get away from it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause it's overwhelming. Yeah. 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 That's how you find cousins. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately, triangulation is important too if you want to confirm some of those older relationships, you know, and connect the DNA into it as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was noticing on um, whatever was just up there, there's a category of nobody with this person's ancestor's DNA right. has taken a DNA test. How how do you enter um, yourself as a DNA uh, descendant? Of that is a whole another conversation. Uh. <laughs> Murray, do you Murray, do you want to take that one? Um, okay, just give me a minute. Um, so basically, while Murray's getting his screen um, set, you would enter your own DNA mm -hmm. uh, and kit, and then it will get filtered back to all of your ancestors on WikiTree. Um, and the percentages that you see are theoretical. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so it might not match what, what is the, in truth, the amount of sharing, but mm -hmm. uh, that's how it, it gets filtered back to. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. But to you don't add the actual DNA test to WikiTree. You don't actually upload anything to us. There's usually a third party website where the test would get sent. And then you can compare chromosomes with people on like jet get match or mono Y DNA from there, the actual test number would be carried over to WikiTree and it would attach it to your profiles and break it down from there. But, you know, again, there's no actual DNA being passed over to, to WikiTree. Right. Yeah. I realize it's just names. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kit numbers. So you go to add DNA test information. Here we go. And my computer's slow because I'm running Zoom. There we go. Now, what you'll get is uh, is this page, and it'll show you your current test list. And since you don't have any already, then it won't show anything. And um, and what you can do, I can go down to the end, and it wants to add new test information. Now, are we talking about an ancestry test? Um, I've got well, I've got family tree and ancestry both. Okay, so for each one, you add a new test. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say we wanted to do an ancestry test. 
So if you're like me, you don't have a DNA portal ID, that's fine. You put in your username at Ancestry. If you've, if you've copied your DNA to GEDmatch, you can put in your, your ID for GEDmatch there. And similarly, if you have one for uh, Genome Link. Mm -hmm. And then you can add a little information here. For example, uh, you can put your, your earliest known ancestors or um, you can put any information that you might wanna share with other people, okay? And then you're just gonna click add test. Now, so let me show you that I've added, for example, here's my ancestry DNA one. And then I've got uh, my family tree DNA test. And I'll just go to edit or enter more. And you can see that I've added my Y, um, my y uh, chromosome, my family tree DNA kit number, my GED match number, et cetera. Okay. So, mm -hmm. So all the so I've added all my information about my uh, about my kits, and I can't see the arrow. How do I get rid of that? You have to move some stuff on your screen. Maybe. Okay. So now yeah. I go back here. Go back to my main page. Mm -hmm. um, come on. My and you can see my DNA connections are listed here. So it's showing me as and my Y kit, and it's showing two of my cousins who have also done Y DNA. Down below, it shows my MT DNA, and then my various kits with ha that have autosomal DNA. So I'm at GEDmatch, I'm at uh, Ancestry, I'm at um, uh, Family Tree, and um, yeah. So I've got all th those there. Now you'll see, you'll notice here's a cousin of mine, Janice. And she's showing as being a 6.25% match with me, okay? And she's on Ancestry and I'm on Ancestry and I can see her as a match on Ancestry. Now, I might have a cousin who, who shows shown here as, you know, I could have had Janice here and maybe I don't have a match with her. So just because somebody's in this list with you doesn't mean you're actually gonna have a DNA match it just means there's a potential for a match about that size, okay? Okay. Now, so this propagates, so let me show you, I'm gonna go up to my, I'm gonna go up to William. He's my third great-grandfather. And you can see when we get to his profile, that my, all my, my Y-DNA matches are listed because he's a common ancestor for all three of us. And you can see that I've got quite a collection of cousins here for my autosomal DNA. So these are people at varying distances from me. And so this propagates all through the tree to all the people that I might be connected to and that other people might be connected to. And it's to help you discover people on Ancestry or, or elsewhere that might be a match to you that are on Wikitree. And so when you wanted, when you get to a future stage where you might want to be doing DNA triangulations to prove, well, not to prove, but to reinforce the notion that you are connected, um, then, you know, DNA, DNA triangulations is an advanced topic. Um, lucky for us, uh, a man named Greg Clark has recently upgraded his, um, his DNA confirmation uh, generator app, and it's working brilliantly. And so when you get when you get to that place in your wiki tree career, you're going to have a great tool to use to help you build your DNA confirmations. So Mary, I have a question. Um, be, like you said, though, some of those autosomal, they're only the possibility that they may have a, a DNA match with you, but they may, you know, they may not actually be one of your matches, but yeah. you can still use this as, from the genealogy side, not the DNA side, you can use it to the genealogy side to establish additional cousins that you belong to, right? By doing the genealogy. Well, I mean, what, what this shows, for example, you know, here we have Mar Marcel Dumas. So what that tells me is somehow Marcel Dumas is a cousin of mine, mm -hmm. right? And now if I, if I click on this button here. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. See the actual relationship to said person. Mm -hmm. So his relationship to the to the person that I was looking at, which is William, 
he's a he's a third great grandson so i can follow the path to find to find marcel right and if we take it a step further we have an amazing feature on wikitree called my cousins we can click on that and instantaneously see everybody that wikitree associates as a cousin to us so instead yes. of having to go for everybody individually there is kind of a one-stop shop um, uh, so if you've gone on my cousins, that's this, that's the whole list instead of going into each profile. That, that's everything that it's found connecting through the world tree. So using the world tree as the backbone to make those connections. I can't remember where that is. Well, it's, it's right there. Under, Go fifth down. Under connections or cousins. Yeah. Right underneath there. Yeah. yeah right underneath the contributions there. One, down. one more down. One down. Almost Got there. Thing in my way. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've used that. That's been really good. And then that's the power of the, you know, the wiki, just taking all this info that you otherwise would have had to dig in for manually. And these people all have either accounts or, you know, their family members. You can see that some of them have, you know, some edits associated with them. And you can see which ones have DNA tests associated with them. And there's Marcel Dumas. And then you can easily by branch on the, with the third column the connection. Yeah. 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 All of this info ties together. Nominated. I really love this feature. I love the, my connections feature. I think those two together are super powerful for finding, you know, connections to people and cousins. Yeah. And I, I know I hogged up a lot of time today, but at some point, I would like to ask more about the Y DNA connection. Um, I have found, you know, my name is Christy, and I'm not a male, but I have a lot of the other ones. I'm looking for somebody in WikiTree that's taken a Y DNA test with a last name of Christy that could potentially help me with my. And now, would that person actually through WikiTree could help me identify my my Christy line? Correct. Uh, yes males so i found somebody in the campbell line who crosses over into the christie line and i was so excited and found out he was a sixth cousin in houston texas and i sent him an email so yeah <laughs> it's been great <laughs> oh, dna is such a thrill it's so i i feel like a project that. should be for the surnames maybe on the project you know we ask for any um any volunteers to take sort of a Y test for a certain surname, you know, and maybe we all pitch in to help pay for it or something because we all we all would, you know, benefit from it. That uh, it could tie into a one name study for that name. If one yeah, doesn't exist, uh, or a one name study for Christy, I don't know. Yeah, so and, we, and now you could start one. Ever done that on the Y DNA? To, you know, I mean, DNA is fairly new in the whole, you know, as we're learning, but seems to me that would be a powerful way using WikiTree in the community yeah. um, to help us. So yeah, just, totally just so you're aware, um, it, it, uh, if you can find a project where your family line's DNA is present, um, well, this, this would be hard for you because you can't get into a Y DNA group. Right. Um, but if one of, if somebody that you knew was in a, was in a Y DNA group related to your name, then they could approach the project leader and offer um, to put some money up, make a contribution to the to the group uh -huh. for anybody who's willing to take a Y DNA test for that name. And then when when somebody volunteers, then the money would be there to pay for their their test. Yeah, that's that's sort of kind of like a little GoFundMe, if you will, for yeah. the Y test. Y DNA. Yeah, I've, I've done that in the past. Yeah, they're expensive, but you know they help a lot of people when you get them. Yeah, Is yeah it's actually it's pretty surprising. I I uh, I approached some of my cousins uh, and said, you know, I I've taken an empty DNA test, and um, nobody else in this line has taken an empty DNA test. I, I just like one cousin to take mm -hmm. the empty DNA test so we can verify that this line, and nobody would take it. Yeah, I've taken that test too. So maybe I need to find a project with that test for me. Yeah. Of course, people, unfortunately. Yeah. Is there any way that those of us who are uh, unfortunate enough not to have Y DNA can enter 
a Y DNA test information from my brother, for example? Nope. Now, only your brother. Yeah, I, I researched this. He has to have his own profile because he owns his DNA. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you have to talk him into joining WikiTree and that whole thing, and then you can then you can work on him. Okay. <laughs> So send an invite, see if he's willing, and then go from there. You... I'm not sure if he's even using a computer anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe I can put a note somewhere. <laughs> that is the challenge when a lot of the people that we want to take tests are the ones who are least likely to be connected on the internet or be computer savvy. It's a sort of irony associated with genealogical research using a thing like this. <laughs> Christine, you can certainly um, you could certainly add information to the research notes on your father's profile. Okay. And you can say in the research notes that um, that 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 a male member of the family has taken a Y DNA test and here's the this and here's the result. Here's the, the haplogroup. Um, because you can't cite a source you, you you shouldn't put any sources in right you mm -hmm. should just say that a member of the family took the test and here is the result and that way if somebody comes looking they'll find that information okay huh. so even if you manage a test you really my understanding is it has to be the person so when someone passes away uh, if they did not put it on wikitree that there's no way to get it on wikitree right if they have a test out there it's complicated I believe that's correct. So before every, you know, so work on all your older relatives first. <laughs> yes. And invite them to WikiTree. Correct. And a DNA them. test. Yeah, get yeah. them to do that. You may just have to walk people through it. That's the thing, you know, with like my grandmother or, you know, anybody that's passed away that, you know, you have DNA tests for, you want to make sure it's established and then you can, you know, utilize it. But uh, there's a lot of times where people don't have that chance. So, yeah. Okay, I have one more question. Um, what is involved in being a member of a project? And how does one become a member of a project? So you want to be a member of the project. Ex excellent question. So all of the, uh, I'll just uh, share my screen. Yeah, uh, uh, all of the projects uh, have a, a free space page. So if you go under find, mm -hmm. uh, and down to projects, then you'll see a list. Um, now the geographical projects are first. Um, biscuits. And, yeah, biscuits. Uh, let's just pick the Australia project. So you click and there, like and it'll take you to their page. Um, now, if if you want to join, uh, the way to do that is by going to their welcome post on G two G, and all the projects operate in the same way. If you want to join, answer this post. Um, now, some projects, it's just a matter of say, raising your hand and saying, I want to join. Uh, other projects do have uh, like a training uh, process, like uh, Hillary is uh, um, a leader in the England project, uh, and the England project has the orphan trail. So that's a, that's a, a training um, experience where you work with um, a, a guide uh, and you learn how to source and format um, in the way that the England project has agreed that they would like all of their profiles to look. Um, there are a few projects like that. Um, England, Scotland, uh, Canada, and the Profile Improvement Project, they all have uh, training uh, training experiences, also U.S. Black history. So once we get through all of the many <laughs> geographical projects, oh, I'll just show you. Also, that we have uh, some, what we call functional projects. Um, projects under themes, if you're, if you love cemeteries we have a cemeterisk project uh disasters notables the holocaust project um these are projects around events and themes and then i was trying to get to functional projects uh, one name studies as oh, you can see there, there's something for everybody um 
functional projects. So Accessibility Angels ha help wiki other wiki treers with um, some who have some challenges um, with with wiki treeing and um, help them around that. Adoption Angels help people who have been adopted to, who are looking for their roots. Ambassadors. Uh, there are a good number of these projects that are dedicated to the health of the tree, et cetera. So um, I hope that helps. That's a, a long answer to your question, Christine. Right. And and you can just say, I want to be a member of the project yeah. and go yeah. about your way. And... Right, right. See here you can the see there are some requirements depending on which one you're looking yep. at. Uh, sign the honor code if you haven't already. Right. Uh, have a certain number of uh, edits. Potentially, they might have that threshold again, like you were indicating. You still need to make it. Uh, but yeah, it just depends on you know which project you're looking at. Great. Well, this is we covered a lot of territory today. Really good questions, and uh, I thank you all for for joining us. As I said at the beginning, we do do these sessions twice a month. Uh, the second Thursday. Uh, Let's see, 8 p.m. Eastern time, and then the fourth Thursday, no, the fourth Sunday um, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so those are the two regular dates. I will put out a G2G post and also update that free space page that I gave you the link to. So please come back as many times as you want. We, uh, we love seeing um, returning uh, participation. So, all right. Thank you, Anne. Well, thank you. I'm going to stop the recording. We'll see you next time. I'm going to go use all my new skills. <laughs> <laughs>